Hey guys, welcome to SAP Careers and Job Seekers Group. This is Sam and my background is I'm a certified SAP consultant. I'm certified project management professional and a scrum master. I run a few companies including SAP, fairly decent size uh, consulting organization. So today we're gonna to talk about when you do a workshop, when you start a project, you first start with the project charter and then you have a project plan in place and the project uh, plan currently follows an activate methodology, right? Uh, which is prepare, uh, discover, prepare, realize, deploy, and then support, run, right? So those phases uh, are standard in Activate. It was originally ASAP methodology, methodology, which was requirement gathering or, you know, requirement gathering business blueprint, uh, realization, uh, final preparation, go live and support, but now it's called Activate, which is following an agile methodology. The difference between the two is agile uses more of a scrum approach, so you can go live and also continue to enhance the product in cycles or waves, or we call it uh, cycles. Now, what we are looking at is requirement gathering workshops. So in the requirement gathering workshop, the number one thing you do is you go out and talk to the client and you will normally do requirement gathering by different business areas. So if you have financial, the financial concern, we do financial and controlling requirement gathering. The materials management guy will do the materials management requirement gathering. The sales and distribution that person will do sales and distribution requirement gathering. The project systems guy will do project system. Production planning will do production planning. Quality assurance will do quality assurance. Plan maintenance, customer support will do plan maintenance, customer support requirement gathering. Now these workshops can go in parallel, but what happens in a typical workshop? We look at three aspects. So the number one is the current process of the client, which is current mode of operations or as is process. And the number two is future mode of operation or the to be process. So as is process is a step-by-step -step process of their current, uh, how they run their current processes. So the people you're gonna assemble are called process owners uh, or super users, right? So uh, the process owner super users are also the train the trainers for us in future once the project is in the training mode, but initial mode, they are super users of the process owner. The process owner could be a person who's an account receivable owner, it could be accounts payable owner, it could be a person who's doing payments through the, through the banks or bank reconciliation. It could be any of those sub process owners or it could be main process owner as well. Now you'll get these people together in a single room as well as other integration areas. So if the finance guy needs the materials management side or sales and distribution person or a production planning person or a customer support person, then you'll get all of those process owners assembled in a single room. As part of the agenda of the project, you will tell them. So number thing, number one thing before we get, get them started. So it's called familiarization, uh, which is prepare or discover. Uh, in case of uh, activate methodology, and you will actually give them a demo of the system. You run them through certain functionalities. And before we start the workshop, we run them to what we call as the SAP best practice to familiarize themselves with the SAP system landscape and what we call as the pre-configured scenario, which comes out of the box. So once you have done that, you will they will understand how SAP functionality is standardized within SAP. You will document the current process, both in terms of a process flow, like a video diagram. You can also use Calm, which is Cloud Asset Lifecycle Manager of SAP. It used to be called a Solution Manager. And that will allow you to do a video diagram, like a step-by-step -step process flow with swim lanes of how the particular, for example, record to report in case of financials, right? So you start with, your general ledger entries, your invoicing, your payments, and then settlement of the accounts and credit and debit note, and then bank reconciliation, and then cost and expense management side. And each of these processes you will document in terms of a process flow, both in terms of a visio and in terms of a narrative. So once you've done that, then you will map this as is process to the business best practice, what is pre-configured and delivered by SAP, and it'll come to a common understanding 
of a pain and gain area that the customer is looking to solve. The pain area might be, hey, my, my ledgers are not fully reconciled at any point of time, or I have a lot of suspense accounts, I have withholding accounts, or my uh, information is not available real time, or I have operate in a silo, then those would pain areas you will address through the best practice and they'll come as is best practice and they'll come to what we call as a 2B process, right? So the 2B process is the future mode of operation. And we follow the template of best practice because it's a guideline. It's, it's an accelerator of SAP given to most um, everybody, actually, uh, all customers, vendors, partners, everybody has access to uh, the roadmap and the accelerators so that they can look at those and they've become a guiding factor of how you want to implement those processes. So as is and to be and the best practice. Now, the difference between the SAP pre-configured scenario and the future mode of operation or the 2B process will give you an effort estimate. What are the changes we need to do to the standard process to come to a 2B process? Now, once you have done those, you'll document the 2B process and then you'll document it as, uh, you know, enterprise architecture or the company overview department structures and then look at, you know, what are the general ledger accounts, what are the customer on vendors, which is called it master data, what are the different documents they send? Invoicing is one, credit note debit could, could be another one. It could be also payroll system that they're running. So all those input and output formats are available to you. And then you will, some of, so this I'm not talking about the reports. So it's, it's documents that you generate, which is basically document information record, right? We call it DIRs, uh, do, document information record. Uh, in case of, uh, purchase, it will be purchase information record, and there's a number below that which they generate. So you will know the, the enterprise structure or the organization structure, the master data, the documentation, and then reports, and then integration of this. Now, this all is documented in a workshop in a, originally in what we call as a, a whiteboard uh, manner, and then you yellow board. So that means once you have determine the solution, you'll bounce it off back from those same process owners and come to a common understanding that this is how you want to run your new processes. And then once this process are finalized, you will document in a document called Business Blueprint, which I'm going to touch upon in the next video. Not this video, but this video is all about the workshop. So you will articulate this, you will share these workshops, you will coordinate these workshops, We'll make sure the as is, the business practice, and the to be or the future mode of operations are properly documented. And that is what you do in a workshop. Now the duration of the workshops could be anywhere, depending on the complexity of the project from one day to maximum of 10 days uh, for a single area like financials, depending on the large, how large the organization is, how dispersed the organization is, how complex the organization is. It could be as short as one day, or it could be as long as two weeks, right? In, in a global rollout, you will have maybe uh, more than a week, two weeks, three weeks for a single process, depending also on the availability and the typical uh, use case, what we call it, uh, previously use case of that particular uh, division or the location that they want to implement that. So guys, that's what we do in a typical workshop for SAP. Uh, if you like this, uh, what you hear and you find this information useful, please like and subscribe this channel. Uh, we do help people uh, to get into the career uh, of SAP world through practical approach, both in terms of training through our uh, organization, www.mlccollege.com, and also through our portal for placement, which is www.hirerig.com. And you can also reach them out at carrier, C-A-R-E-E-R-S at tapsol.com and our account manager will be happy to help you. Now, if you need a product demo, we'll be happy to demo these, uh, both the cloud solutions, the older solutions, the private cloud, the public cloud, as well as the ECC, the old system that's there. We have multiple servers available. We are a SAP service partner and we work across North American organization as well as Africa, African subcontinent and Asia Pacific as well. So thank you guys and look forward to speak to you. Uh, thank you. And this is Sam signing off.